today's reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that there were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. All right, thank you, Jay. All right, Hebrews chapter 11. So uh, continuing in this series, the superiority of Jesus, and uh, just excited about uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, this chapter today, one of the most uh, well-known chapters in the Bible, uh, talking about these examples of faith that, uh, that God has given us, those who have gone before us, and what that looks like and what that means for us. Uh, you know, as I was thinking about that, uh, this passage of Scripture this week, I was reminded kind of uh, what the the process of where we got to Hebrews chapter 11. So uh, remember uh, last week in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, we talked about the fact that the writer to the Hebrews was, uh, was warning the, the first century Jewish Christians. He, he was telling them that, that they have, they'd started in the faith and that, uh, that they were going strong, but not to leave that faith, not to give up on it, not to quit because there were serious consequences if they did. Did. And we talked about the fact that uh, uh, judgment and hell and that he brought all these things up and talking about how serious it was that if they fell away from the faith, that they, if they quit on God, that there would be serious consequences. The good news is that that was last week and this week we get to talk about chapter 11. So it's kind of like chapter 10 was the warning, um, started a little bit in chapter 9 and then uh, specifically in chapter 10, warning them about falling away. And then chapter 11, 
11 is really the example of people that we are to follow in the faith. So it's this idea that uh, we have these people that have gone before us, that have kept the faith even though it was difficult for them, and you can also keep the faith as well. Look to their example. Look how they live their lives. You can do it too. And so that's where we are in, in chapter 11. And uh, just thinking about the context of, uh, they were in very difficult times in that first century. So remember, Jesus died and rose again around 33 AD. Uh, most scholars think that Hebrews was written in the late 60s, uh, shortly before the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Okay, so by this time, the persecution of Christians was getting pretty severe. Uh, the apostles are starting to be mar martyred. They're starting to disappear one by one. All of a sudden, the leaders are starting to, to get killed off. Um, this, this first generation of Christians who knew Jesus uh, in person or knew the apostles in person are starting to get older. And there's a new generation that's coming forward that they are uh, encouraging in the faith. And so they have had faith up until this point. But persecution is getting pretty serious. And so this is the context where we find ourselves, where this letter to the Hebrews is being written. And, and we can find that context of difficulty even in our own lives uh, this morning as we're going through national uh, pandemic and, and unrest in our society and uh, racial tensions. That, that things are not necessarily easy and even could be described as difficult. And so we can relate to what the writer to the Hebrews is, is saying this morning. Um, you know, sometimes it just, it just feels like there, there's, there's nothing else that could possibly happen. It's just, it's just you know, it's just everything's wrong. It's, it's bad. It's, it's hard. It's difficult. Um, and uh, I was reminded of, the, of that this week. My, uh, my daughter Lydia and I uh, were driving back from the cities on Friday night, and there was a, a really bad thunderstorm that was moving across Minnesota from the, from the west to the east, and we didn't get hit too bad in Rochester, but uh, in the cities it was really bad, and, and driving back on 52, uh, some of the, the worst uh, conditions that I ever drove in. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're driving back, and I'm driving really slow on the expressway, and uh, it's pitch black, but there's lightning, like every two seconds, there's lightning everywhere. I mean, it's pouring rain, you can't see the road, the lines aren't written uh, very well, uh, there's, you know, we're hydroplaning, I mean, it's just, it's just really bad, and I, and I tell Lydia all this, I'm like, I don't, I don't think the conditions could be any worse, and, and then it started to hail, <laughs> and she's like, Dad, you had to say something, didn't you? You had to say, I mean, sometimes we feel like it couldn't get any worse, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't possibly, whether it's individually with circumstance in your life or what we're going through as a nation, it couldn't possibly get any worse. And then it gets more challenging. And your faith is just, it's shaken. It's, it's like, what's going on? What, what is happening? And so it's, it's in that context that we hear in chapter 11. Hold on to the faith. Keep on going on. Don't give up. Look at, these, look at these people that have gone before you and what they have done in their lives. And so we start with the, with the definition of faith in, in verse one, that faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what is not yet seen. God desires and delights in our faith. He is pleased by it. Uh, faith is not, faith is not a, uh, a get out of jail free card. It's not just uh, uh, insurance. It's not only a ticket to heaven, right? So uh, as we invited the baptismal uh, families forward this morning, uh, that's the reason why we ask them as parents and sponsors, do you commit to raise your children in the faith and, and to, to, uh, to, to bring them to church, to present them with the word of God? Because if it was just a, a, a magic um, trick that we were doing and, and it was just, you know, it's just the water and, and that's all that was. And we just stand out on the corner all day and just sprinkle people with water. We just turn on the sprinkler. Just, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? If that's all that it was, 
No, but it's a, it's a commitment. It, it's, it's releasing of that faith that, that we're going to be committed to Christ for our entire lives. It's not just a compartment, but it's, it's the realization that we are surrendering our lives to Christ and committing to follow Christ with all that we are and all that we have. I wrote this down about the uh, definition of faith. Uh, faith is believing what you can't see, feel, or sometimes even explain so strongly that it affects your entire outlook and how you live your life. Again, faith is believing in what you can't see, feel, or sometimes even explain so strongly that it affects your entire outlook and how you live your life. It is not just compartmentalized. It's not just a portion. It's not just for a ticket to heaven. It's not just insurance. It is how we live our lives. And so what I wanted to do is I thought that I would actually go through these examples. Most of you know the stories, all right, from Hebrews chapter 11. You, you know uh, Abel and, and Abraham and Noah, and, and you know the people and you know their stories. But what I thought would be beneficial for us this morning is actually to look at what it was that they did that got them in this list of Hall of Fame. What, what, what actually, why did they get put in Hebrews chapter 11 as these are the people of example that you want to follow? What is it that they did? Because we can do what they did. We may not be able to have the exact same story or have their name, but we can have faith and do the things that they did. And so I wanted to be able to go through uh, some of these examples and just talk about what it was that their faith looked like and how we can implement that in our lives too. So in, chat, in, uh, in verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice that he gave uh, God his very best. That is definitely something that we can participate in, that we can do. We can give God our very best. Not that we are going to bring uh, goats or bulls or doves or whatever it is as, as a sacrifice, but we uh, can commit to God and give in faith our very best of all that we have and, and, and participate to to offer sacrifices just as Abel did. In verse 6, we see uh, the next example here is Enoch listed in verse 5. And I think verse 6 is actually uh, referring to Enoch as well because we see this list of people that are, are indicated here. And there's no break uh, between uh, verses 5 and 7 that mention anybody else. So I, I think this is actually referring to Enoch, although we don't usually uh, give him credit for this. Now without faith, it is impossible to please God since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So we see this in this example of faith from Enoch that we are to draw near to God, that we are to seek God, that that is what Enoch did and that is what we can do as well. We can draw near to God by, by reading his word, by coming to church, by praying, uh, seeking him. That is how we can participate in the faith of Enoch as well. Verse 7, we look at Noah by faith. Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. That, uh, that there was a fear of God that Noah had. Uh, God was asking him to do things that had never been done before. And that he would see things that had never been seen before. That there would be a flood and rain. And like, God, what are you talking about? Well, part of Noah's obedience was the fact that he had a fear of God. We don't know all the communication. We don't know all the conversations that, uh, that he and God had. But we know through this passage that there was a, there was a fear of God that actually helped him to accomplish the task that God had given him. And so we recognize that we also need that fear of God in our lives to express faith as well. Uh, verse 8, we start getting into uh, Abraham here. And uh, we, we, uh, most of you know the story of Abraham and how God called him out from, uh, from a land that he was with his fathers to a land that he did not know. And it says there in verse 8, he went out even though he did not know where he was going. 
Faith means stepping out when you don't necessarily have all the details. You may not know what's going to happen. You may not know uh, what the end result is going to be. You may not know where you are going, but yet God is calling you to step out anyways. He's saying, by faith, I want you to do this. Just as he spoke to Abraham, come out from your father's family. Well, that doesn't make sense. Go to this land that I will show you. I don't, I'm not even going to give you directions yet. Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, uh, go, to, go to this land where all these um, uh, people that don't know me and don't worship me are. Well, that, that doesn't make sense. But by faith, he was able to step out and be obedient to God even when he didn't have all the details. Continuing with uh, Abraham there in verse 10, we see he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose architect and builder is God. That that was one of the reasons that Abraham was able to walk in faith is because he was looking forward to the eternal city. He was looking forward to the, the new Jerusalem, to the new heavens and the new earth, realizing that it wasn't just about his kingdom. Think about Abraham's faith for a second. That, that uh, God promised him that his descendants would be as numerous as the, the stars in the sky, as the sand of the sea. And yet, he waited 25 years to have one child. And we know, uh, based on the calculations of ages, that Abraham probably met his grandson and was around him for about only 15 years. So he had one son and one grandson. That's all he ever saw in his entire life. Yet he was promised the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. How do you get through that on a daily basis unless you're not counting the kingdom that you're living in, but you're looking forward to the eternal kingdom and knowing that it's not just about life here on earth, but it is about what is yet to come. That's what Abraham is looking forward to. That's what he was looking forward to. And that's what we need to look forward to as well. Verse 11 uh, we see the faith of Sarah. I know she gets a bad rap uh, sometimes and, and that we do see in Genesis that she actually laughed when, uh, when she was told that she would have a son. But we are uh, uh, committed here in verse 11 of Hebrews that she also had faith that when she was unable to have children that she received power to conceive offspring even though she was past the age since she considered that the one who had promised was faithful. Sometimes faith means just Believing in God, having faith in God, that we may not even be able to believe in the promise, right? That, that this is, that's what this is talking about, that Sarah, she may not have even believed what God had to say, but she believed in the God who said it. And sometimes we just need to realize that we need to have faith and trust in God Almighty, and, and that we may not even understand what he's talking about or know how it could even come to pass. But guess what? I trust God. And so we can have that faith as well. As we continue on in verses uh, uh, thir starting at verse 13, it starts to talk in more general, uh, talking about all those uh, people that have come before this verse. They all died in faith, although they had not received the things that were promised, but they saw them from a distance, greeted them, and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. Again, we see this idea of this, uh, this, this temporary residence, this idea that we are pilgrims here in this land, that this is, this is not all what it's about. And this is hard for us as Americans, right? Because, because we're blessed and highly favored and we have so much and, and, and houses and cars and TVs and video games and sports and, and whatever it is, right? We have it all. So it's hard for us because we're so caught up with what we have that we're like, we kind of like it. That's, that's a hindrance to our faith that we are to, to realize that th we're just passing through, that we're only pilgrims. This is not our home. This is only temporary. 
and that, that the real blessing is going to come in the eternity of heaven forever and ever. That, that's the real blessing. That's the real kingdom. That's what we're really looking forward to. And in verse 15, continues on. If they were thinking about where they came from, they, wouldn't, or they would have had the opportunity to return. So we see this with the Israelites, right? So this is kind of the contrast, right? The people that we're talking about that had faith, that they didn't think about where they came from, and they didn't think about what they had right then. They were thinking about what they would have in the future. Well, the opposite is true of the Israelites. Remember them? They said, oh, remember what we had back in Egypt? We had better food back in Egypt. And look at this manna that we have. And, and look at uh, this, this quail that we have. We're just tired of it. We're sick of it. They were looking at their current circumstances and their past circumstances instead of looking ahead to the promised land. God said, I'll give you this land if you just go into it. And yet they were uh, convinced that they had to look at what they had and what, what they had in the past instead of what God was offering them in the future. And so we're, we are reminded as well to look to the future, not what we have, not what we have had, but to what God is offering us, what we will have. Whoa, okay. Got some angels up here. All right, amen, amen. All right, uh, verse 19, uh, continuing on with Abraham, he considered God to be able even to raise from someone from the dead. So here we're talking about Abraham. Uh, he was tested. God asked him to offer up his own son, Isaac. And this is what the Bible tells us about why Abraham was able to do that. What he was able to do in faith was to offer Isaac up as a sacrifice because, verse 19, he considered God able to even raise someone from the dead. That Abraham believed that God could do anything. And we need to believe that God can do anything. That he, if he's asking you to do something, that if you know it's God, that he's saying to, to, to be obedient, he's asking you to step out in faith, he's, he's asking you to do this thing, to whatever it is in your life, however he's communicating to you, that sometimes we have to have the faith to believe that God can do anything. How, how could God uh, say that my descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky and then ask me to sacrifice my son? Well, you know what? God can do anything. He could even raise him from the dead if he wants to. He's God he can do anything. We also need to have that faith that God can do anything. V continuing on in verse 22, so we get into uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and we see this example that, uh, that Abraham uh, blessed Isaac. Isaac uh, blessed Jacob and Esau. Uh, Jacob blessed uh, his sons and also the sons of Joseph. And when they did that, they were proclaiming blessing upon them and their families for their future, for things that were yet to be seen. Notice the faith of Joseph there in verse uh, 22. He says, um, by faith, Joseph, as he was nearing the end of his life, mentioned the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions concerning his bones. That Joseph had so much faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do that he made the people promise that after I die and, and I'm gone, that when I'm buried, you dig up my bones and bring them with you because I know God's going to do it. And we need to have the faith also to proclaim and to believe those things that are going to happen in the future. Verse 23, we see Moses and his parents here. Uh, by faith, Moses, after he was born, was hidden by his parents for three months because they saw that the child was beautiful and they didn't fear the king's edict. So we talked about the fact that, that Noah had the fear of God, but here we see the example that we need not have the fear of man, that Moses' parents weren't afraid of the king that they realize that there was danger. Sometimes there is danger. There's real danger in stepping out in faith. Like people aren't going to be excited about what you have to say or what you are doing. 
and that there can be danger that's involved with that. But we see the example of Moses' parents here that they were not afraid of the edict of the king because they knew that God was telling them to preserve this child, that he was special, and God had a great plan for him. I mean, think about all that Moses did. And what was at stake here? Definitely, God was communicating to his parents to protect and preserve Moses. And, and they had to not be afraid of man, not be afraid of the king who could take their very own lives. And God protected Moses and his parents. Verses 24 through 26, uh, talking about Moses, Moses specifically and talking about what he gave up in the realization that faith sometimes for us is putting Christ over everything. Verse 26, for he considered reproach for the sake of Christ to be greater wealth than the treasure of Egypt since he was looking ahead to the reward. That Moses gave up the kingdom of Egypt. That he was adopted as a son of Pharaoh. That he had everything that you could ever want. He had the mansion, the palace, the, the chariots, the, the women, anything he ever wanted. He had it at his disposal. But he said because God was calling him to help the Israelites and to be part of his people, he said, I'm going to leave Pharaoh's household and I'm going to go and help the Israelites. Sometimes we need to realize that we need to put Christ over everything. We need, to, we need to give up the things of this world. If we want to walk in faith, that there may be some things that we have to leave behind. There may be some things that we have to give up in order to, to walk in faith and do what God is calling us to do. And then finally in verse uh, 28, I'm just going to end uh, with this verse here as, as we uh, talk about these examples. Uh, still talking about Moses, that he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. It's the idea that he was obedient to do what God was calling him to do. And that if we want to walk in faith, that we also need to follow God's instructions. We may not get it, understand it, know why it's important, okay? Uh, that had never happened before, that the angel of death had never come to wipe out an entire people before, but yet Moses did it himself and he told all the people of Israel to do it. Listen, put the blood over your doorposts because the, the angel of death is coming and they all did it. He, he, was, he, he showed his faith by being obedient and we also can walk in faith by being obedient to what God asks us to do and what God requires of us. So I just want uh, to end there talking about uh, those examples and, and, and just really close with the realization. The rest of the chapter, uh, verse 32, what more can I say? Time is too short. I feel like, you know, he, writer to the Hebrews, he's kind of preaching here. He's like, you know, kind of time. You guys are watching my time here and, and uh, somebody's watching his time too. He says, time is too short. Uh, I can't tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets uh, who by the faith conquered kingdoms. And, and so, uh, and, and, and then the rest of the chapter, he talks about all those who lived by faith but never received what was promised in their life. That they, that they walked by faith, they lived by faith, they, they uh, administered faith, and yet, they didn't receive those promises in this life. And it's just a reminder to us, a commendation, that we can't control our circumstances. We cannot control our outcome. The only thing that we can control is how we respond uh, to the faith that God has given us in our actions. That's the only thing that we can control. Abraham didn't get to see his promises fulfilled. He didn't get to see the, the stars of the uh, sky. But David, he saw his entire kingdom, uh, riches and wealth and, and people beyond numbers. Okay, Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. He got to see the freedom of the Israelites, but he didn't get to go into the promised land. Joshua got to lead the people into the promised land. We don't get to determine the outcome of our circumstances. 
It may go well, it may not go well, but we can control how we respond with our faith and our actions. And so it's a reminder to us not to look at uh, where we're at, where, what, what's happened in the past, what we don't have, but to continue to look forward in the future of what God is calling us to do so that we can attain what God has promised. Those eternal promises that are guaranteed. The, the eternal kingdom, the new heavens and the new earth, the forgiveness of sins, the, the eternal bliss of heaven. No more crying, no more tears, joy forever and ever. Those promises that we know that are certain that, that God has given, that we look to the future and know that they are waiting for us after we finish this life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for the examples of faith that you have given us in your word to encourage us in our walk, Lord, so that we know what it looks like to, to live by faith, to walk by faith, to not look at our circumstances, but to look forward to what you have waiting for us in eternity and to the, to the blessings that will be there for us all the days of our lives forevermore. Encourage us with those people and with those words today. In Jesus' name, amen.